Hey, what's up everybody? It is me, Derek Daniel, creator, actor, writer of Losing Hope, and I am here with Pedro. <laughs> with Pedro Figueroa, <laughs> who plays Donnie and Losing Hope, and Miss Brianna Michelle, who plays Kelly. And we are here. We're, we want to share some things with you guys. We are so excited to be here. Fellowshipping. Yes. Hey. Fellowship. Hey, cheers. Cheers. But yeah, we just want to talk to you a little bit. Talk to each other and you know, just have a good time, talk about losing hope and um a little about a little bit of our personal lives. Just Maybe not too much into my personal life, but Oh, but everybody else's <laughs> <laughs> But no, but um but yeah, thanks for for being here you guys. Right. I wanna ask you guys. Okay. So losing hope. Yes. Yeah. This project, you, you stumbled upon it two different ways. I remember exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, actually, no, let me back up. So I wrote Losing Hope out of heartbreak. Mm. Okay. Situation, you know, my Atlanta days when I was living there, I live in LA now. Um, but a friend hooked me up with someone and um, turns out that the same friend ended up being with the person I was dating. Oh, <laughs> um, that's so. Thank wow, okay. you. As you see, broke broke my heart. Um, but the great thing is, it, it inspired me, right? right? So I never thought that that would turn into this project, losing hope. But um, you know, I just said, let me just write. So in a spiral notebook, I was just writing out my feelings, just thinking through different um, feelings, mm -hmm. and they became these concepts, and then it became losing hope, and all about this character Gideon. So Ooh. some things are, you know, real life. Most of losing hope is fictional, but I mean, <laughs> we can all identify with some of the situations. Yeah, um, so that's that's a little bit of what inspired me to write it, right? Mm -hmm. So you guys come in, right? You see this casting, well, not in your case, but with you, <laughs> you see a casting for losing hope, and it's uh, searching for a, the character Donnie. Mm -hmm. um, what was your your thought process? What motivated you to what? I think I got a request to submit. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. um, <laughs> yes, so request. I got a request, um, and I read through the story, and you know, like I don't, I, I, I couldn't even tell you what the character description for Donnie said. Like, I, I feel like it might have been lengthy. I feel like there was probably details in there, but I really couldn't tell you what there was in there. Um, but I know just like the storyline was enticing. And then I got the sides, which um, for those who have already watched, um, <laughs> it was the grocery store scene. Man. So that's a very important scene, and you know it's a pivotal scene um, for Donnie and, and Gideon's characters. Um, and I just had fun with it. And I mean, like I, I, I just you know thought the character was fun, the situation was fun, and. Um, it seemed very, I mean, it seemed realistic to run into someone that you saw at the club or the bar, you know, <laughs> at the grocery store or somewhere public. And, um, yeah, I just kind of put myself in the character's shoes and, um, yeah, I mean, I just didn't, I didn't think too much of it just cause you know, you audition so often and so much, um, so you don't get too, too attached. But I know once, once you call me back and then we ran through it more, then I got more excited yeah. um, because I felt like, oh, like this might actually happen um and then i kind of you know became more invested in sort of like doing doing my work to sort of you know find out who donnie was nice to see you again again i saw you at shine the other night i'm sorry i, I don't remember you know you can tell a lot about a person from what they have in their shopping cart oh really yeah of course Okay, so now that you violated my privacy. <laughs> well, you eat really healthy. And from the way you stressed over which lettuce to pick, you are serious about your veggies. It's kale. <laughs> it's the same thing. Ice cream must be your guilty pleasure, huh? Three flavors. Were you stalking me? <laughs> yeah, I, I think you were stalking me. And you, you must be an alcoholic. No, no, no. Everybody. Deserves a drink every now and then. And you obviously can't cook. I do know how to cook. I'm Latino. I know I wear around a kitchen in more ways than one. So let me show you sometime. When 
no, I'm good. I was excited when you asked me to be your best <laughs> friend. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, and I really loved the script, and I felt like it was very relatable to me and like what my friendships really look like as well, because we always go through things. And as a friend, I'm always there. Like, you know, you can always call me, and I'm always like, what happened? Where are you at? What you need? You know, so I felt that, um, you know, I was just giving a lot of who I am already to someone that I already like familiar with and I know. And then I think, you know, now we're gonna be best friends because <laughs> I love you. And um, I just really, I just really love the script. It just seemed very relatable to just relationships in itself. You know, um, friends being there for one another, supporting each other when a friend is losing hope. Mm. You know, as a friend, you're supposed to give them hope. And that's what I hope I was giving you with a little sassy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Miss Kel is always ready. Yeah, yeah. always. Yeah. <laughs> always. Um, and I just really loved it. It just felt very natural and um, organic to really what life is and mm -hmm. what life looks like yeah. outside of the land. You know you're amazing, right? Thank you. So are you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it. You okay? Yeah, of course. Okay. Well, I just came to support my bestie. Bestie? Who says bestie anymore? Everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you so much for coming. It really means a lot to me. Yeah. You know I'm here for you, right? You better be. Oh, I better be? You better be. <sighs> well, speaking of where I better be, I gotta get back to work. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming. <laughs> of course. And have a beautiful day. Thank you. <laughs> At work, that is. Uh, <laughs> bye. <laughs> so this whole idea of love, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hopefully we can talk a little bit of, about love in our each of our, our lives. Um, you know, out of heartbreak comes new love, mm -hmm. right? So what, what have your experiences been with finding love? Because I know you guys are finding love. <laughs> <laughs> you can say our right, situations. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what is, what is that like for you? I mean, what would you it's say? Terms of, you know, what would you say to someone who, you know, may have been heartbroken, um, you know, who maybe has some apprehension <laughs> about being in love again, dating, all of that? I, I don't know. I just feel like it's a part of, um, it's a, it's like a, it's a gamble. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when you fall in love, you know, it's, it's a gamble. And, you know, when you when you accept that you love somebody that you fall in love, you know, you also accept the reality that like you might lose that love, you know, mm -hmm. it's not a guarantee. Um, so I don't know. I just feel like you go through heartbreak. Like, it, yeah, it's just a part of life. You know, mm -hmm. I just feel like, you know, as, as the heartbreak happens, you know, and you know, you sort of get over it and sort of heal and mend your heart. I feel like, you know, new love will come, you know, it, it always comes. It always mm -hmm. finds you. Um, after you've reached the point, I mean, hopefully once you've reached the point of, of, of healing from the previous sort of heartbreak. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think like it's just a part of life, honestly. Hey. Hey. Beautiful night. Yeah, well, it started that way. Well, it could still end that way. No, 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 no. I'm saying it's a beautiful night. The spot's cool. The vibe is dope. And you're here. You only die once. You only live once? No. You only die once. You live every day you wake up. So okay. Gideon is very guarded. Yes. Right? My character, I play Gideon. He's very, very guarded. guarded. Um, <laughs> you know, like, hmm. Yes. Right? Like, who are you? Right? Bridget. <laughs> Bridget. 
<laughs> Rich, so, he thought yeah. it was a, 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 a stealer. He, you know, stealing yeah, a things. Thief. A thief. <laughs> yeah, he called, me, he called me a thief. Yeah. <laughs> For taking a business. Because I was trying to throw spit game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think Donnie's perspective might be similar as well. I feel like he, he may um, not hold on to things as long as Gideon does. I feel like he, he might navigate through life as like, I mean, it was a love lost and you know, he goes through his motions, but it's not gonna like debilitate him or sort of mm. take over him. Where I feel like Gideon is a lot more pensive and really thinking about it and it's really getting to him. And yeah. he's like really in his head about it where I feel like Donnie's like, all right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what am I gonna do? You know, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep walking forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And as, you know, from Kelly's perspective, mm -hmm. um, you know, Encouraging, getting like give it a chance, yeah. like give them mm -hmm. a chance. Um, thank you, thank yeah. you so much. Thank You're you. welcome. <laughs> you know, he needs to open his heart again. You know, be more vulnerable to new things. Um, you know, love is you learn love from your parents or what your relationship is. It's growing up. So, you know. I guess, you know, me not having a father, I didn't understand what that love language looked like from a man, mm -hmm. you know, so it was always seeking that type of, of love. Um, and it's, you know, it's difficult because, mm -hmm. you know, you start encountering people who are similar to my father or mm -hmm. to your father, to your mother, whoever was absent or whoever loved you, you know, you start seeking that type of familiar familiarity mm -hmm. <laughs> did i get the word right yes you did um and yeah there's that there's that you know we got the spanish fries in the house <laughs> and um you know just just um once you start growing up and you start finding yourself again or, or finding yourself and understanding who you are and stop seeking things that are not for you, you know, or, or not um, healthy for you, mm -hmm. then, you know, you actually are able to open up to people who are for you. Oh. And, you know, a lot of times when we get hurt in relationships or heartbroken, we start rejecting everyone, feeling like everyone is similar to that person. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, not everybody's the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Relax. Mm -hmm. You know, there are good people out there, but you attract certain energy as well too. Mm -hmm. So if you have that type of mentality, those are the type of people you will attract. Yeah. But if you're like open to like, you know, I love myself, I'm gonna go into a relationship as a whole O mm -hmm. and whoever I meet is just gonna be another circle of happiness around me, mm -hmm. then everything will be bliss. Mm -hmm. But if you go in there as a C and looking for someone to make you happy mm -hmm. um, and to make you whole, then you know, you're definitely less likely to stay in that relationship because yeah. it's mm -hmm. not healthy no, you yeah. know so you know as far as kelly i just you know i felt like you're a whole oh you know mm -hmm. but it's just a matter of finding that peace within yourself that allow you to be a bit more open to relationships yeah and i just want you to to be happy mm -hmm. and not just work yeah. and go home and sleep <laughs> <laughs> you know what kelly i shouldn't even go i mean he probably stole my business card when I dropped my wallet anyway, which makes him a thief, right? Oh my God, Gideon. And if he's stealing shit, who knows what else he's into? Gideon, do you know how crazy you sound right now? Like, get over the fact that he wants to get to know you. Kelly, I don't even like him. <laughs> boy, quit lying. Okay, I do, but- Put your big boy panties on, okay? Go and have fun. Enjoy yourself. You know, we, we, we talked little bit about heartbreak and I, I talked about what inspired me to write Losing Hope mm -hmm. um, and it's the losing hope piece but for me in my real life I think there have been moments where I, I felt like I've lost hope when it comes to love and it's not so much because it comes from both the heartbreak mm -hmm. but I think it really comes more from what I always believed love was mm -hmm. because I, I had both parents in my household you know? yeah. and um, you know that's that's all that I saw you know my parents were together since they were really young um, you know they, they dated when they were really young and then they stuck together and then they got married and then they had seven kids and were together seven. Yeah. Wow. and they were together until um, my father passed away so growing up whenever I thought about love the idea of love 
you know, meeting someone, I thought it was going to be instant. I thought mm-hmm. they would want the same thing that I wanted because mm-hmm. I, I thought that they understood what or had the same definition of love oh, that I had mm-hmm. because mine was based on my parents, yeah. right? So it's interesting to see how these, um, you know, how our perspectives differ partially because our family situations is not just about, you know, losing the, the, the hope and love from heartbreak, but mm-hmm. also um, losing hope because what we believe love to be it, is not, yeah. um, oh my you God, know, absolutely. coming into fru- fruition. Your dad always gives you cool toys. Yeah, he's the best. Hey, beautiful. What's the matter? What's the matter? Your sister is the matter, Troy. Tanya? Yes, her. Come on, Sheila. And everybody grows up so differently, oh, you know, and it's like their idea of love and what they see, the traumas they experience, mm-hmm. all those things like layer on to what people bring into relationships, unfortunately, you know, Absolutely. and yes, yeah, <laughs> And we see some of that um, in the series. We see uh, little flashbacks of Gideon and yeah. Leon, Child. and we see um, sort of like the 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 unrest that's going on at home between you know Gideon's uh, yeah. um, parents, and um, we we know that that's sort of like eating away at him or yeah. even when his birthday is mentioned yeah. he automatically <laughs> kind of goes back and he's yeah. thinking about you know um i'm sure at some point we'll find out you know more about what happened right. but i feel like it's insinuated that there there's there's trauma there there's mm-hmm. something there that it you know really affected him and it it sort of shapes the way he sees himself he sees love and even even how i feel like he doesn't like to celebrate himself Sexual assault is now at an all-time high. And it's not a black thing, it's not a white thing. It's an epidemic that is affecting men, women, and children across the globe. And as survivors, we suffer. We suffer through pain and shame and guilt, and oftentimes not understanding how to move forward. Can we talk a little bit about trauma? Mm -hmm. Um, Is it okay to talk about trauma? Um, Because I know when you came onto the project, Mm -hmm. I I had already written uh, episode one. Um, And then just, you know, talking to you, getting to know you more, Mm -hmm. understanding your story, um, we added in the scene about the sexual assault, um, which is something I personally haven't experienced. Mm -hmm. Um, But how important is that for you to have something like that included in this project. And it's something that I definitely want us all to explore more oh, you know, as yeah. we develop the project. I I was really honored that you actually listened to me, you heard me, and you felt, and you understood that it is a topic that needs to be addressed. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's not just, you know, women that are affected, it's mm-hmm. men that are affected, it's children that are affected. Mm-hmm. Um, this not, rape is not racist, sexist, or religious. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's unfortunately anybody can be exposed to it. Mm-hmm. So, and the topic that it's like not an issue; it's an epidemic. It's mm-hmm. a problem. You know, and the fact that you heard me and was like, you know what, this is something that I should bring into your character was like very like I was a bit taken aback by it. Honestly, mm-hmm. I think there was a moment when I was reading the script where you wrote it. And then I kind of wanted to re, you know, readjust some things. I was like crying. I was like, wow, like he really actually put this in, yeah. you know, like he just took a piece of me and put it in here. But mm-hmm. to help the masses who are going to watch it, mm-hmm. you know, because it's just something, you know, it's, it's to be said that when you go through something, you go through trauma, not just sexual trauma, mm-hmm. but you can still thrive. You can still continue to live. You can mm-hmm. still get up, we still wake up, we still make up, we still work, we still have families have kids we still try to figure this life out you know and no one's exempt of trauma so um it you know it just speaks to a larger audience as well people are just like oh wow this is a topic maybe i've experienced maybe i know someone experienced because unfortunately 
either it happened to you or you happen to know someone within your lifetime that it happened to, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. You know, so it's a, um, I just thank you for that because I was very thoughtful. It was very, um, I, you know, I don't know. I just was really honored that you actually put that mm-hmm. in that, in, the, in this whole, you know, um, series. Yeah. And I'm glad you gave me your feedback. You yeah. know, when I wrote it, I was trying to be very thoughtful. And um, when you were like, can I make some changes? Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I missed the mark. No, you didn't miss the mark. You know what I mean? No, <laughs> you didn't miss the mark at all. It was just certain things that I felt like I wanted to say just to survivors. Um, and, some, and partially to myself, too. You know, because there is things that when I speak, like even yesterday speaking at Cal Poly, it was like, you know, I speak, but I speak to myself, too. Because I'm always, I'm healing in progress. Mm-hmm. You know, I think healing is a constant you know, progression, you know. It's like my dream. Yeah, it is. It's not like, oh, I'm healed. You know, it's like, good luck with that. (laughs) Uh, You know, it's like, because you got the triggers, you get all the the things that come with just trauma. um, But you just do your best to stand tall and continue to, you know, be a survivor. So I just wanted to really speak more to the survivor aspect and not just on the topic of sexual assault, but you didn't miss the mark at all. It was just, I just wanted to speak a little bit more to survivors about thriving past trauma. And as survivors, we suffer. We suffer through pain and shame and guilt and oftentimes not understanding how to move forward. But we can reclaim our power. We can restore our lives by being bold and being fearless. We owe it to ourselves. Thank you.